Pam Ward was responsible for ensuring overseas visitors pay their bills in hospital. So a GP's referral could be a gateway into the system? Very easily. Um, GPs um, would send a referral. There's no mandatory obligation for a GP to identify an overseas patient or a possible overseas patient to the, to the hospital. So it could easily not get picked up. They have an English address, a registered GP, an NHS number. Um, so there is really no way that the hospital will pick up from that. It's a common criticism from those making checks on overseas visitors. Once the hospital receives a, a referral from a general practitioner, I think there's an assumption that that patient is eligible for treatment, um, not an unreasonable assumption. You would think that's something that's been checked with the GP. So many people, staff won't check. We've decided to put that to the test. Remember, we have three undercover reporters, all now registered in the NHS on fraudulent grounds. Could they obtain free hospital treatment without anyone really checking who they are or whether they're entitled to NHS care? According to our NHS insider, Asif Butt, that's not going to be a problem. Anyway, look, first of all, thank you for uh, Priti. She saw the doctor after the attempt so wounded. She saw the doctor on yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Asif coaches us on how Pretty should behave to slip through the system. Whatever the problem is, you give minimum answers. Yeah. You don't say, oh, we just come to the country and... Yeah, well, this is the way she's... You don't say all that. You just go for right. your scan. That's what we just want to clar clarify. You, you just go for your scan. Yeah. And let them do what they have to do. Um, they do not ask you for any passports. They do not ask you for anything. All they don't ask you Asif for logs on to the surgery's computer system to find out more about Pretty's medical condition. So is it sent him for sent for X ray or um, scan can this scan. MRI? MRI scan. Is that and expensive? You know, much, you know how much that costs? No. That's about eight hundred pounds. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Just with the scan you've made your money. Okay. Eight hundred pounds to get into the NHS. A bargain, according to a safe. It's the day of the scan. Time to see if it's really as easy for someone who isn't entitled to get treatment as a SEAF makes out. Just outside the hospital here at Heartlands in Birmingham, about to go in for my MRI scan. Pretty goes for the scan, which if she was a real health tourist and paid privately, would have cost about £800. But did the hospital detect her? So how did that go? What, what happened in the hospital? I uh, basically went in uh, with my appointment cards. I was asked to confirm my name, which is obviously my fake name, um, my date of birth, which I gave the fake date of birth, and also the first line of the address, which is also fake. And apart from that, I was taken in, had the MRI scan, came out. So all of the information you gave in the hospital was fake? Correct, yeah, everything. That so was it. did anybody ever ask you if you were ordinarily resident in the country or? No, we did. If our undercover reporter was a real health tourist, the MRI scan could be just the beginning of a lifetime of free healthcare. We asked Heartlands Hospital about their failure to check Pretty's residency. They said that on this occasion, as the patient was referred via a known local GP practice, they assumed that they would have had to give details of their home address and national insurance number when registering at the doctors. And what about Francis, who paid rather less, £300, to the Nigerian fixer Femi to join a South London practice? I caught up with him close to St Thomas's Hospital in central London. So, how, how is it going? Where are we at at the moment? So, I've been in to see the GP. I described my condition to her and she said it must be um, restless leg syndrome. Restless leg syndrome? Yeah, and she gave me a referral to come to St. Thomas's for some tests. Oh, so you're going for some yeah, blood tests? Yeah, blood tests. So, you're in the system now? Ah, uh, yeah. That's what it looks like. I'm, I'm in the system, yeah. This is the form our undercover health tourist got from the doctor. It's a routine referral for blood tests to a hospital, but really it's his ticket from the primary care system, which is the GP system, into the secondary care system, which is hospitals. 
Francis is going into the hospital for his blood tests. St Thomas's did not check whether he was eligible for free treatment before doing the tests and he wasn't asked for any payment. A procedure that would have cost about £100 privately. We asked guys in St Thomas's hospital why they didn't check our undercover man's story. They said they believed that in the vast majority of cases patient eligibility would be established before treatment. They added that they'd implemented more rigorous checks in A&E which they anticipate extending to other outpatient services. That's two of our undercover operatives who've had free treatment, but could the third get a free x-ray? I caught up with Alex, who had taken on my role as Darden Lume, the Kosovan builder, to find out. The last time I saw you, you were on your way to the doctor. You done that? Yes, last? Yeah. I did. I went to visit my GP. I asked for a referral to go yeah. to the hospital, have an x-ray. He pointed to gave me one. This particular hospital actually is said to be at the forefront of policing this kind of thing, so we would expect them to check and ask. Okay, let's try. Let's okay. see. Let's do it. West Middlesex University Hospital. It's been held up in Parliament as an example of best practice for identifying and charging overseas visitors. So if Darden Lume is going to be exposed anywhere, it should be here. Within 20 minutes, the x-ray for his bad back is all done. That was really quick, wasn't Very it? Very quick, indeed. So, I was with your reception. They didn't ask me what's there? No, they only asked me when I gave them a referral paper. They only asked me my name, date of birth, and that's it, and address. Now, this hospital is quite close to Heathrow, and it's said to be at the forefront of policing whether people are really entitled to care. But today, for Darden Luma, it was plain sailing. When we approached West Middlesex, they told us that in this case, because the patient was referred by a GP, staff assumed he was entitled to free NHS treatment. The hospital said it was retraining staff always to double check that GP referred patients are entitled to free testing. Generally, it said it's confident that its systems are very robust. Now, one of the reasons staff may not be checking is because the rules on who should and shouldn't pay are just so complicated. Have a look at this. This is the government guidance on the issue. It's nearly 100 pages long, not exactly light reading. And this concerns who should pay and the kind of questions they should be asked. The guidance all hinges on one key term. Ordinarily resident is, uh, resident is a phrase which sounds good common sense, but when it comes down to actually implementing it, the policy is often unworkable. This is the poor old NHS being given the task of implementing something which is unworkable. How does it work on the ground? Um, people do their best to try and recover the money after patients are often dispersed back around the world. Um, that's even, an even harder task. Hospitals are meant to check if a patient is entitled to care, whether they're referred by a GP or arrive through accident and emergency. A&E itself is free, but overseas visitors should pay for any further treatment. The hospitals we tested with our undercover reporters let them through without a problem. But what's the national picture? To find out, we asked all 171 trusts in England and Wales about their checks to identify overseas visitors. 133 of them responded, and those responses were checked by two experts. They found that 45 trusts, a third of them, were not following government guidance. I put those results to the health minister. And a third of them are not doing the checks. Yes. Actually, I think if I was being honest about it, I'm surprised it's not more than that. Really? Yes, because we know that there is we know that there is a real problem. And that is why we are having the review. The hospital trust, which appears to be one of the weakest at detecting unentitled overseas visitors, was the Worcestershire Acute NHS Trust. They said they'd identified just one health tourist in the last four years, charging them a grand total of £889, despite serving a multicultural community. It turns out that the Worcestershire Trust doesn't have anyone responsible for identifying overseas visitors. 
Chris Skidmore is a Conservative MP who campaigns on this issue. The fact that they don't have somebody specifically coordinating and recording does suggest that that's one of the reasons why there are so few people who actually ended up being logged on their books as being not eligible for care. Worcestershire is a trust under pressure. It has to make savings of £50 million by 2015. a and and maternity services at Redditch Alexandra Hospital are at risk. Locals are up in arms at the proposed cuts. So could Worcestershire be wasting valuable resources by not charging overseas visitors? Worcestershire said it was committed to managing its finances effectively and that losses have to be judged against the costs of recovery. It said whilst it doesn't have a specific role, it does have systems to monitor and recover money owed by overseas patients. It said it was currently in the process of recovering money from three such patients. It's government policy that hospitals should make these checks. So, what does the new minister say? You might be surprised. There are many people who are watching this programme, probably myself amongst them, who would be offended, frankly, if every time I went to hospital, I was effectively being asked to prove that I was entitled to free NHS treatment. I don't think anybody wants that system. What we don't want are the abuses. Despite the obvious confusion in the system, some overseas visitors are identified and charged. But how many? Well, we asked all of the 190 hospital trusts in the UK. 121 trusts told us that in the last four years, just under 40,000 overseas visitors had been detected. But is that anything like the full story? I think the scale of the problem is really difficult to find. We just don't know how many people there are in the system because the, the processes we have in place are not robust enough. So we don't know because the system just doesn't pick people up? We don't know because the system isn't picking people up. So how much is overseas visitors' failure to pay actually costing the NHS? Well, Panorama asked all 190 hospital trusts in the country how much money they've had to write off or how much is still outstanding from the treatment of foreign visitors since 2008. 147 of them gave us a response and they told us that just under £40 million pounds is outstanding or has had to be written off in the last four years. But that's just when hospitals actually do detect the overseas visitors. How many thousands don't get picked up and billed? I do think it's a tip of the iceberg. 40 million may not, some people will say, oh, that's not much compared to the 110 billion pound budget of the NHS. But when you look at some of the trusts who've come back and have said we, we have no bills whatsoever that are owed to us, that's clearly not the case. They've clearly not been collecting the data. So the NHS seems to be hemorrhaging cash and we simply don't know how much. But beyond our shores, there's another way in which the NHS is paying out money it doesn't need to. And it's all to do with this. This is the magic key. A European health insurance card, or EHIC. Like these holidaymakers, every year millions of European citizens travel throughout Europe. And during their holiday, thousands of people need urgent medical care. If you fall ill in Europe, you can use this card and the country you're in will bill the NHS for the cost of your treatment. So you might think there'd be close scrutiny of who gets an EHIC card. Think again. In fact, in Southall, our middleman Chamanlal is getting them for anyone who's willing to pay him for the privilege. We asked Chamanlal if he can get us a card in a randomly chosen fictitious name. To get the card, we'll have to supply a national insurance number. It should be an important check in the system to stop fraud. But it's no problem, according to Chamanlal. He'll provide one. It costs us £340 for the EHIC card, 
and for that we also get a national insurance card in the name of a fictitious tourist. It seems that if you've 